Hey everybody, how's it going? Skyward Sword is better than Breath of the Wild. I know that may sound crazy, and it probably is, but when I say that I prefer Skyward Sword to Breath of the Wild, it isn't because I think Breath of the Wild is bad, but rather because I think Skyward Sword is amazing and the most underrated game in the entire series. Skyward Sword may not be that underrated in terms of sales or even critic reviews, but Skyward Sword is certainly one of the most hated games in the entire series by the fans, and I think a lot of the hate for this game is completely unwarranted. Don't get me wrong, Skyward Sword Sword does have its problems like every other video game, but I really do think that Skyward Sword is exceptional for the Zelda series in many ways. So without further ado, let's elaborate a little bit, and let's talk about Skyward Sword. When I first beat Twilight Princess last year, I assumed that that was the pinnacle of dungeon design in the series, because sure the first two dungeons were pretty weak, but when it comes to Twilight Princess, most of the dungeons in that game are really good. I came into Skyward Sword pretty soon after I beat Twilight Princess, and going into the game I wasn't expecting dungeons on the same level, or even close, and my expectations were blown out of the water. The puzzles, the atmospheres, the bosses, the unique and interesting settings, everything to do with the dungeons in Skyward Sword is completely perfect. Let's look at a dungeon like the Skyview Temple, which is one of my favorite dungeons in the whole series. When you first enter this dungeon, it's already shrouded in mystery and it feels unsettling from the start, but as you progress through the dungeon, the puzzles begin to get more complicated, and the music becomes more intense to the point where it's drowned out by a haunting choir, and everything around you gradually feels more and more ominous. This rich atmosphere really isn't replicated by the far majority of Zelda's dungeons, and if this was a one-off thing in Skyward Sword, it wouldn't really matter, but Skyward Sword has this level of atmosphere in all of its dungeons. Skyward Sword also has such unique items in comparison to most Zelda games. I mean, look at the whip, and the beetle, and the gust bellows, and the digging mitts. These items make their respective dungeons stand out so much more, and experimenting with unique and clever items like the whip can result in dungeons like the Ancient Cistern which is one of the best dungeons in the series. It would actually be a big problem if these experimental items flopped or weren't fun to use, and I'm sure to a lot of people that's the case, but I thought these items were fantastic and oftentimes better than the stereotypical items in the series, like the bow or bombs. I think that level of innovation in Skyward Sword goes far beyond just the items, and I also think that a lot of the experimental things done in this game turned out very well. People often criticize Skyward Sword and say it's too monotonous or unoriginal for the Zelda series, but I think a lot of that is just people overlooking what they introduced in Skyward Sword, because there's a lot of new stuff. Look at the stamina wheel, I mean everybody talked about how great it was in Breath of the Wild, but it was actually introduced properly for the first time in Skyward Sword which nobody talks about. It is true that the stamina system in Skyward Sword was a little bit underwhelming, kinda like it was in Breath of the Wild 2, but at the same time, I don't really see anywhere else it should have been used, and I thought it was a cool new mechanic that served its purpose. There is one mechanic that isn't quite as easy to appreciate though, especially to other people, the motion controls. There's a lot of criticism out there for this game, but I think that if anything makes people hate this game more than all the other stuff, it's the motion controls, which I sorta understand. The issue with the motion controls is that they are everywhere throughout the game, so if you like motion controls, you'll probably love the game, and if you dislike motion controls, it can be a big problem. I for one loved the motion controls and thought they were especially fun during combat and in boss fights, but at the same time there were moments where I felt like the motion controls were very unnecessary. I mean, do I really need to flick my arms to move across a vine fast enough, or aim my controller in a specific direction to put my sword down? The motion controls are a little bit excessive, but at the same time, I think people saying they completely ruined the game kinda need to get over it, and I don't like saying that most of the time, but Skyward Sword has a couple of real problems, and motion controls are not one of them.
Speaking of real problems that Skyward Sword has, my biggest complaint with the game that I know a lot of people have talked about too, is that there is undoubtedly a small amount of padding, especially near the end. The best example of padding in this game is the quest for the Song of the Hero, where you have to travel back to all of the major regions for the third time, only to go through pretty underwhelming challenges. I actually loved the challenge to reach the dragon in Elden and thought it was one of the best parts in the game, but the other two challenges, especially the one in Farron Woods, were just really boring and clearly low effort. Another obvious example of padding is the imprisoned boss fight, because this is a boss fight that already isn't very good, and it's brought back twice for basically no reason. I actually kind of understood when they had you fight the imprisoned for the second time, because sure, it was boring and not a good boss fight, but at the very least you did get to see some cool character development for Groose, but there is absolutely no excuse for bringing this boss fight back for a third time. It may sound like I'm complaining, because you know I am, but I do want to say that Skyward Sword, sure it has some padding problems, but so does every other Zelda game aside from Ocarina of Time and A Link to the Past. So while it is a real issue, I don't think it's a fair reason to call Skyward Sword any worse than the other Zelda games. Another thing people say is a problem in Skyward Sword is the Silent Realms, and while I do think that there's some argument there, maybe, I don't get it at all, because I thought the Silent Realms were great. They were such fun little stealth missions, and while they were too easy, there were a couple of times that I was actually pretty stressed during these, you know, it really got me on my toes, and most Zelda games never do that, or even come close. I never really saw the Silent Realms as backtracking like other people did, because sure, you're technically in the same regions you've explored before, but the Silent Realms are all about completing the challenges fast enough and stealthily enough, and it's not at all about exploration. I really saw few to no problems with the Silent Realms as an idea or an execution, and I loved them. There was this one little glitch where a ghost was beneath the floor and almost got me killed, which is definitely a little sloppy and worth calling out, but it is the only glitch I ever found in the game, so no big deal. Now seems like a good time to talk about the world in Skyward Sword itself, because once again, everybody calls it boring and monotonous, even though it's great. Farron Woods is beautiful, but also very light-hearted and adventurous, full of interesting creatures and a great soundtrack. Elden Volcano is this difficult landscape that feels more like an obstacle course than an actual region to explore, yet it doesn't feel out of place at all, and it looks really good. And then you get to the best of them all, Laneru, which feels challenging to traverse like Elden, and interesting and fun to explore like Farron, and this region truly feels unique especially once you reach the Laneru Sand Sea, which I would go far enough to say is one of the coolest and most atmospheric areas in all of Zelda. All you have to do to realize how great this area is, is just listen to this soundtrack. How can anybody hate this game? While the overworld is interesting and fleshed out, it is true that the sky feels like it's lacking a bit and there isn't a whole lot of content in general, but the thing is, everything that is in the sky is great. Skyloft is one of the best towns in the entire Zelda series, the Lumpty Pumpkin is charming and a cool business that gives you a taste of this world's culture, the Thunderhead Isles are atmospheric and beautiful, and the few other islands in the game present fun little challenges for the player. So, is it a problem that there are only five real islands in the sky? For sure, but I think the amount of quality stuff there is in the sky can definitely make up for what's lacking, and that's not even mentioning that the majority of the main story takes place below the sky. Speaking of the story, I thought it was surprisingly good for a Zelda game, but I still didn't care for it that much. The only Zelda games with stories I've actually ever cared about are Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess, and while Skyward Sword's story was good, I don't think it was quite good enough to get me hooked. I actually cared far more about the characters in Skyward Sword than the plot itself and the events of the game, and I found every character in Skyward Sword to be very well done. This is my favorite iteration of Zelda in the series, and I think they got everything just right with her. Groose is a numbskull, but he's hilarious and has some decent character development. Fee was annoying at times, but she was definitely an interesting companion, and the two villains were some of the best in the entire series. Demise in particular had such a cool demeanor and an amazing character design, and the fight against him is one of the best boss fights 
In all of Zelda, there were also a whole bunch of other fun and interesting characters who were more to the side and weren't a big part of the main quest, but naming them all would be a massive waste of time, and in general, the characters in Skyward Sword were simply amazing, and I would put them on the same level as the characters in Ocarina of Time, or even the Wind Waker. At the end of the day, I've always just wondered how a game like this can get so much hate. Skyward Sword has one of the best art styles in the series, one of the best soundtracks in the series, some of the best characters and storytelling in the series, the best dungeons, I mean seriously, what does Skyward Sword not have that the other Zelda games do? I think a lot of the hate for Skyward Sword doesn't even have to do with the problems in the game itself, but rather that people were just tired of the Zelda formula at the time. It's the same reason that to this day you'll see people calling Twilight Princess too similar to Ocarina of Time, and it's the same reason that Breath of the Wild decided to get rid of every tradition that the series used to hold. People felt like the series hit a wall at that point, and it might be true, but can you really blame that all on Skyward Sword as a game? I feel like in a few years we might see a resurgence in love for this game like we are right now with Twilight Princess, and I hope that happens, because Skyward Sword is a 10 out of 10. Okay, video over now.